Aya, and welcome back to Cilio Tales of a New Dawn. The game that he... no. Uh, hmm. Hmm. The game that teaches us that the most homophobic people in existence are gay themselves. I can come up with better shit than that. Um, hmm. Let's just hop right in. I'm totally turned on a stick right now. Maxwell made his departure with, his dis with a distinctive spring step, leaving both Ty and me and Ty and me shell shocked in the aftermath. My heart began pounding in my chest as I grabbed as I grasped the reins of my panic mind. Oh fuck, that's bad. That's really, really bad. What the hell do we do? We need to warn him. Way ahead of you. Like he had done twice already over the past day, Ty began a call to Apollo before raising his phone to his ear. This time the stakes were so much higher, and I prayed the result would be different. With bated breath, I waited nervously. Damn it all, still no answer. What are you doing? No answer. Of all days, why this one? They can't have already found him, right? They wouldn't have come here otherwise. I have no idea, but I doubt it. Shit. If we can warn him, if we can stop him from being taken, we need to head up there. Aiden, for all we know, there could be a large group of them. For all we know, they could be armed. Surely they wouldn't shoot civilians. Maxwell, he just didn't seem like the type. And you've got to do something. Anything. Wait a moment, Aiden. I... There's no time to wait. Look, I'm going. Either you can come with me, or I'll go by myself. I'll walk through this damn storm if I have to. So are you coming or not? Stop. There's something about this that bothers me. Huh? What is it? The way he now seemed to recall seemed... I do not know. It's supposed to seem strange to him out. Interesting timing to it, and I did not hear the phone ring, but I suppose it simply could have been on vibrate. What are you thinking? We had just told him we would not be helping him even after he tried hard to convince us otherwise. I suppose this phone call was simply a change in strategy. That he wants us to believe that Apollo was in immediate danger so that we panic and head up there. He would still have no idea where Apollo was and would follow us instead, having us lead him straight there. Damn it, do you really think that's the case? That's just it. I do not. But do not let his drawl or appearance fool you. The UMC may well be an organization. From what Apollo has told you, their agents are nothing short of elite. That sort of deception would be their bread and butter. Fuck. What the hell do we do? If we stay, he might just get snatched up and we could have actually done something to prevent it. But if we go, we might be the ones responsible for it actually happening. Hang on, let me edit the stream tags real quick. <laughs> Great heavens. I already feel largely responsible for having for things having gotten this far, but the last thing I would want is to allow him to be captured by doing nothing. I would regret that for the life, for the rest of my life. If you go, at least we're there, right? Even if we lead led Maxwell straight to him, at least we might be able to hold him off or something, give Apollo time to get away. This way, no matter what the outcome, at least we have a fighting chance, right? Ty appeared incredibly confl conflicted. This was no small choice, and one that came with a mountain of dire consequences regardless of whether we choose right or wrong. Either way, Apollo would have to flee, and chances are we'd never see him again. Very well. Our number one priority is to ensure that Apollo is safe. As much as I dislike the idea, it is better than the alternative. And if I have to fight, I will. Whatever it takes. Let us be going. You're not seriously going like that, are you? At least put your jacket back on. Oh, very well, then.
With so much as switching out the light, without so much as switching out the lights, we both ventured out into the dark and stormy night, battling the harsh winds as we got into Ty's car. He fired up the engine and quickly reversed out of the driveway before slamming his foot down, the wheel spinning briefly on the rain-slicked surface before grasping traction. Never before had Ty driven so fast. The walls were clearly breached, not that we cared. We had bigger things to tend to. Parking the car on the grass off to the side of the road, we then briskly fought our way through the shrubbery not unlike I had done two days before in similarly dire weather. The manor soon came into view, set against the stormy skies as a foreboding loomed overhead. An uneasy, f an uneasy feeling churned deep within me. Not one single window was illuminated from within, the manor as dark and still as death itself. Thankfully, or perhaps not, it seemed as though we were the only ones here. As we arrived at Apollo's front door, we took shelter beneath the awning overhead and approached the door prepared to knock. It was then our exhausted breath gave way to an uneasy sound. For carefully fastened to the door head, there was a conspicuous white envelope. Ty reached out, retrieving the letter which he held tightly within his hand. Several moments passed before he stared, making no attempt to open it, before instead thrust the letter before he instead thrust the letter towards me with a pleading look in his eyes. I fear what this letter may contain. I cannot bring myself to open it. Please, Aiden, would you mind? I nodded in silence, taking the letter from Ty's outstretched hand and unfolding it. Surprisingly, I was unable to make the words on the page, page in such limited light. I took my cell phone from my pocket and utilized the torch function to illuminate the letter. It was immediately clear that Apollo was something of an accomplished penman. His every word written with intricate cursive that was noticeably difficult to interpret regardless of lighting conditions. This is some incredible handwriting. He clearly knows his way around a pen. I wonder if he used his own feathers as quills before pens were invented. I cannot imagine why he would not. With how rapidly he shed them, there would be no shortage. Without a doubt, the handiwork of someone who has been writing for thousands of years. Would you like me to read it aloud? <coughs> Please. I cleared my throat, nervous but ready to begin reading. I hoped for the best, but I had not yet an oppor but I had not yet had an opportunity to read ahead. I'll learn the answers to my questions as soon as Ty did. Dearest Ty and Aiden, also I pray, if you have found this letter attached to the front door of my manor, you may rest assured that I am safe. The United Council. The United Medical Council has not yet found this place, and I have already departed. Know that you are under surveillance. I know not how long this has been the case, but nonetheless, my visit to you earlier tonight did not go unnoticed. I was about to lose the tale, but it confirms what I have feared. They are very close indeed to discovering my whereabouts. They seem to be aware of our history, and they may well contact you to try and get to me. Woodcrest is no longer safe for me. In truth, I should have moved on long ago. Staying in one place for too long is much too dangerous, but I suppose I find it hard to let go. Alas. My hand has now been forced. I wish I could have made this departure in my own time and had the time to say a proper farewell. But there is nobody but myself to blame for this predicament. I apologize that we could not say goodbye in person. It is something I will always regret deeply. And I apologize for all the pain I have caused you, both of you for that matter. I knew visiting you at the bar that day was a foolish mistake, but it was one I made all the same. I regret how things concluded, and I regret how my secrets came between you and Aiden. Please know that I am glad for all the wonderful memories of the times we shared. I will never regret those and I can only hope that you remember them as fondly as I. And, and you have grown into such a wonderful man. It has been a privilege to witness over all these all these years. I'm so very proud of you, Ty, and I know that Grand will be just as proud as I am. I love you, Ty, more than words could ever hope to express, and that will never change for as long as I live. I wish things could have been different. I am sorry I created such a mess. The clock has just struck midnight. It is your birthday now. Happy birthday, my dearest Ty. Aiden set off for Somerville during the afternoon. He is likely still there, considering the trains no longer run during the evening. I do hope he found accommodation, and I hope the gift he brings you was worth the trouble we both went through. It came from overseas, you know. The import fees were rather steep, but you are worth any expense. Of course, it is Aiden himself who will collect and deliver it. I hope you work things out. I know how happy he makes you, Ty. You deserve to be happy. I will always regret not being able to do so myself, but with this, I hope you will understand. He knows everything, and with my departure, there is no longer any need to protect me. You both have my full blessing. Please, make Aiden happy as you made me. And Aiden, if you two are reading this, please do the same for Ty. Make him happier than I have, than I ever could. He deserves it, and I, and I know you can do it. As soon as I finish this letter, I will be leaving for good. I know not where my destination lies, nor the name I will assume upon my arrival. I wonder what the future has in store for me. I settled in Woodcrest shortly after I lost Artemis about a century ago. A new start is long overdue. I wish you both the best in 
Best of luck in your future and your happiness together. Remember that no matter what, I'm out there somewhere rooting for you. Be sure not to let me down. Yours eternally, through, through for the final time, though for the final time, Apollo. P.S. Give my best to Lucas. That's everything he wrote. Thank goodness. You have no idea how relieved I am to hear that Apollo is safe. The thought of him being captured filled me with dread. Though I suppose I should not be surprised how Apollo outwitted us all yet again. He always did. Always. I should not be surprised in the slightest. Though I wish there had been a time for a proper farewell. But I know full well that I have already said my goodbyes. I already lost Apollo and I have mourned that loss. There are no tears left for me to shed and knowing that he is alive and well, this does not seem like such a dire outcome after all. We no longer need to keep his secrets from the others as well. I will miss him dearly, but so long as he is safe, that is a sacrifice I will willingly make. I'm glad you're taking this so well. All the same, I'm here for you. You know that, Ty. So if you wanted to talk, reminisce, or maybe even just cry, I'll be here, alright? Thank you kindly, my love. It's my pleasure. Though now it seems that I will never get to thank Apollo as I had hoped. Fear not, my dear, for I can assure you that he knows that- Gentlemen, hope you don't mind if I take shelter beside you. It's about the storm I'm having. Neither myself nor Ty had been aware of Maxwell's presence until now, likely due in part to the harsh conditions that had concealed his approach. His timely arrival at this specific destination will also serve as confirmation of Ty's suspicions. Hang on. We had come here, and he had followed, but unfortunately for him, Apollo was already long gone, which was the very reason we had been able to, unable to make contact with him ourselves. And with an almost 48-hour head start in a totally unknown direction, the UMC would have little recourse but to restart their search from scratch. Maxwell sighed as he closed his umbrella, joining us beneath the awning where we could all shelter from the storm. Ty wasted no time asking a question of him, one whose answer I was equally curious about. How much did you overhear? Enough to know I won't be returning home no hero. Probably stuck here for a while now, watching in case he returns, which he won't. Sorry you didn't get your cure, Maxwell, but Apollo was our priority. He didn't trust you guys, so we... Hey, no need to explain. I get it, and I don't blame you either. Must be a real swell guy if you two are looking out for him like this. He was. In fact, swell would be quite the understatement. I ain't actually met an immortal yet. This is as close as I've, got as I've gotten. I've heard so much, so I'm guessing curious. Ah, uh, well, if I'm lucky, maybe one of the other two will turn up sometime soon. Apollo will probably be laying low for a good while. The fact he's stayed put for a hundred years without us figuring out where he is is kind of impressive. He did good. And as for the others, Dionysus is constantly on the move. He's a pain in the ass to track down. By the time we investigate any leads, he's always long gone. As for Artemis, well, there ain't been no sightings of him in a good while. Aya! Ah, okay, so, um... Apollo's gone. He's gone. Not dead. He just left. That would be because he is deceased. Eh? Deceased? That is correct. Apollo buried him personally. Not long before he arrived here in Woodcrest. What? Apollo hasn't- hasn't Apollo been here for a century or so? He has, yes. It's only been seven years since we last sighted Artemis. Are you certain? Because Artemis has been dead and buried for longer than Woodcrest has even existed. Could it have been somebody else? Doubt that. We verified the sighting with a pheromone sample and everything. We don't do that sort of stuff in half measures. That is impossible. Don't know what to tell you. If I'm honest, if Apollo really buried Artemis himself, maybe he ought to check the grave sometime. Well, for what it's worth, I have no hard feelings towards you both. Hope you can say the same for me. Honestly, your bar has accidentally become my favorite drinking hole, so it will be seeing me from time to time. Though it'll be pleasure, not business, going forward. Hell, I think I could use a good drink tonight for that matter. Better be careful I don't end up like your cheetah pal, eh? <laughs> One of the best things I've seen in a long, long time. And for what little it's worth, I'm sorry. I wish things were different, but, well, they ain't. Well, good night then. Until next time. And with that... Maxwell re-established his umbrella and stepped back out into the vicious storm in which he quietly vanished from sight once more. This left Ty and me in total silence as we grappled with the information Maxwell had just given us. Do you think he's telling the truth? If so, Apollo would really want to know about that. It, It is a lie. Do you think so? Indeed, told for the same reason as the lie that brought us here. On the off chance we might have some idea where Apollo might be found...
<coughs> no. One last time. <laughs> Bazinga bird. Indeed, told for the same reason as the lie that brought us here. On the off chance we might we have some idea where Apollo might be found, or know of some way he might be contacted, Maxwell is hoping we will do so. They will be watching for a while yet. They are hoping we might point them in Apollo's direction. And recall that Apollo recently returned to the place where Artemis was buried. If the grave had been disturbed, I'm sure he would have noticed. It is simply another of Maxwell's tricks, and with no way of us knowing where Apollo might have gone, nothing more than total flop. That makes sense. I guess that's what he does, huh? It sure seems so. Hey, Ty, are you sure you're okay? It is a lot to process all at once. Maybe it is too early to say for, for sure. What I know is that I am thrilled to know that Apollo is safe and well. And it is as I said before. I am all out of tears to shed. I have mourned this loss already. Only now the, now the particulars have changed. There is also some sense of relief, perhaps. I never cease loving Apollo, and the few occasions we have spoken since, they were difficult, to say the least. At least that is something I will no longer need to fear. I understand. Just remember that I am here for you, okay? Anything you need, I'm here. And I'm going to do as Apollo asked. I'll stop at nothing to make you happy. My dear, you already make me happier than words could ever describe. Apollo would be proud of you, too. I wonder if, I wonder if we will ever see him again. It is unlikely, I know, but... How about we escape this awful weather? A warm fire awaits us back home. You don't need to ask me twice. One of these days, I really ought to invest in an umbrella. It almost seems we had struck upon a best case scenario. Apollo was safe. Ty was handling it well, all things considered, and no longer needing to keep Apollo's secrets. It was a weight off both of our shoulders. We darted through the pouring rain towards the spot where Ty had parked, and all I could think of, think about was where Apollo might be going, and what kind of name he would choose for himself once he got there. I hoped we would find a place he truly. I hoped he would find a place he truly loved, a place where the UMC would not find him again so easily. He deserves some peace and quiet, and I genuinely hope that he would find it. Upon our return home, the harsh conditions hadn't eased in the slightest. Raindrops spattered the top of the roof of Ty's car, not unlike machine gun fire. As he pulled into his driver and switched off to the ignition, neither of us made any attempt to leave our seats as we prayed for even the small, smallest relief in the ongoing storm. Alas, that was a mercy that nature would not, seem, not see fit to grant. With little choice but to face the weather head-on, we both counted down in unison <coughs> before practically launching ourselves from the vehicle and spreading around the side of the house towards the front door and the promise of warmth and shelter beyond. As we rounded the corner, the solitary thought shared between us was the relentless dull deluge we both endured. But as the front door came into view, those thoughts were almost immediately discarded. After all, a considerably more pressing issue awaited, awaited us just prior to our destination. It's Logan! Logan? Oh, oh. Between us and the dry sanctuary beyond stood a polar bear who was positively saturated from head to toe by the unrelenting storm. He trembled uncontrollably, the wind and rain having chilled him to the very bone. <clears throat> the rain was no longer important within our minds. Both Ty and I shared a look of guilt and pity before turning back towards the sorry sight that shuddered on the doorstep. We we didn't. I tried to speak up, but my mind was flooded as this, was as flooded as the surrounding streets. I choked on my words, barely uttering more than a few confused words. Thankfully, Ty realized and wisely chose to intervene, saying what I should have said in the first place. Please come inside, Logan. It is warm and dry with a roaring fire to soothe your chills. Y yeah, let's get you out of the storm, all right? Okay. I just, I just want to hug Logan. I, I just, I just want to give him a big old hug. As Ty closed the door behind us, Logan made a beeline for the fireplace as soon as it came into view, leaving wet footprints on the carpet each and every step of the way. His socks were as wet as his shoes he'd just removed. 
which were in turn no less saturated than any other element of his attire. Logan knelt before the blaze, shivering still as he extended his semi-frozen hands in an attempt to thaw them. Both Ty and I watched on, sharing in that same sense of guilt before we turned to one another to discuss our next move quietly. Goodness, I... <clears throat> I feel terrible. With everything that has happened tonight, I regret to say that this possibility has had entirely escaped my mind. Of course it did, Ty. Considering what we just dealt with, we can't be judged too harshly for forgetting. Not that it makes me feel any better about it. <clears throat> oh. Indeed, judgment makes little difference. Just look at him. What a dreadfully sorry sight. How long could he have been waiting? That poor, poor thing. We can't... We can't... We can't have been gone for that long. But, but any amount of time is too long in that kind of downpour. I just want to give him a hug. I'm inclined to agree. Aiden, would you mind doing me a huge favor? Hmm? Of course not, what do you need? I would offer to wash and dry Logan's clothing while he enjoys a much-deserved hot shower, but I understand he is still nervous around me. I can only imagine how uncomfortable he feels right now. The last thing I want to do is make that worse. Would you extend this offer on my behalf, my love? I'd greatly appreciate you doing so. Of course I will. That sounds just- that sounds like just what he needs. Thank you, Aiden. Just have him pass the clothing to you through the door and bring them to me. I'll take care of the rest. Hey, I can operate a washing machine, you know. Let me take care of Logan and his clothes. You should take care of yours. Aren't you sweltering under that heavy jacket? I just want to change back into something more comfortable. But Aiden, I... Ty, seriously. Do me a favor and look after yourself for once. I can handle this, okay? Very well, my love. My washer is a combo unit that dries as well. Once you have placed his clothing inside, you need... Ty, I can operate a washing machine, okay? And before you say... Oh, but mine is all fancy and special because I am totally rich and stuff. Seriously. It's a washing machine. I majored in computer science. This sort of thing is child's play for me. Are you certain, my dear? This particular unit is... Ty, come on. You trust me to help you run the bar. Can you please also trust me to figure out a washing machine? Just image 13. Oh, yeah. yeah. I apologize, my love. I had no intention of questioning your capabilities. I, of all people, know how capable you really are. Simply run a quick cycle. It will wash and dry his clothing within 30 minutes or so. This is, perf this is perfect as we do not wish to keep Logan waiting again now, do we? Definitely not. Alright, leave all that to me. Oh! Do, do you think Logan knows how to operate a shower like mine? Oh, wait! I do hope you did not have any difficulties when you went to use it. If so, I can only apologize profusely. I had so much on my mind that day, and I simply- Oh my god, Ty, seriously! Just breathe for a minute, okay? It's adorable how much you worry, but at this rate, you'll give yourself a hernia. Your shower is super straightforward. I worked it out no problem, and I'm sure Logan will as well. This was not strictly true. After all, it had taken me several minutes to work out the fancy touchscreen display, which also served as the controls for the shower itself. But Logan was smart. He'd figure that out in no time at all. What about you, my dear? You're every bit as damp as me. You brought your suitcase with you. You have a change of clothes, yes? Don't worry about me. I'll take care of myself self once we have tended to Logan. Everything is under control, okay? There's no need for you to fret. Very well, my love. Thank you, and I apologize. I do not mean to fuss. I will leave Logan in your very capable hands while I change into something more comfortable and dry. Great. See you soon, Ty. And you, my dear. Finally heeding my suggestion, Ty turned away and quickly vanished down the hallway in his mission to relieve himself of his heavier attire. As for me, I turned in the opposite direction where Polar Bear continued to tremble and drip in front of Ty's delightfully cozy fireplace. Hmm. I approached Logan, opting to kneel next to him so that I could soak up some of the fire's warmth for myself. I turned my gaze towards him, and having noticed my arrival, he returned this gesture with an expectant look of his own. His ears pricked up, eager to hear what I had to say. How long were you waiting before we got back? A about 20 minutes. Aw, oh, shit, dude, I'm- we're all- we're really sorry. We had an unplanned emergency we needed to deal with. We probably arrived not long after we left. It's okay. Honestly, so much time had passed that neither of us really thought you were coming. And considering the weather, we at least expected you to call, call us for a ride. What on earth possessed you to walk in this kind of weather? I was scared. The night th that you came over, when I sent you that message, I freaked out. I spent the time before you arrived just panicking. I had locked myself into my decision, and I found that really terrifying. 
if I asked you guys for a ride, that would have been the same. But by walking instead, I, I could back out at any time up until I knocked. I felt better knowing that I could still run away. That makes a lot of sense, actually. But I guess you probably agonized over it anyway, right? Seeing as we left you waiting for so long. Only a little. Actually, I um, I started feeling better about it because I, because while I waited, I was still here when you guys got back because I, I really wanted to be here. Really? Oh, that's great. We really wanted you to come too. Thanks for taking us up on the offer. Y yep. Um, and I wanted to say thank you for being patient with me tonight. And the other night is too. I would have been happy if all we did was watch a movie. But I'm glad things went further. I had a really great time. I hope you did too. You don't have any regrets, right? Nope. I, I waited... This boy is too innocent for his own damn good. Mm. Uh, oh. So, sorry, he's um, he's not going to be mad, right? Of course not. The carpet is the least of his concerns. We're both far more worried about you. With that in mind, we were wondering if you'd like to take a hot shower while we quickly wash and dry your clothing. It'll only take 30 minutes or so. Uh, oh, um... I get the feeling Logan might drop Trow, so, uh... Would Ty be okay with it? I'm only a visitor. Logan, it was his suggestion. He's fussing with guilt over the fact that you were out in the cold for so long. Taking a shower should help to soothe his guilty conscience. You'd be doing him a favor. Why is he guilty? It was my choice. I know, but that's just how Ty is. He's very empathetic, sometimes to a fault. So what do you say, Logan? Fancy hot shower? Ty is super fancy. He's got a touchscreen and everything. A touchscreen? Yep, you press the buttons on the display to operate it, and you don't have to wait for it to warm up, either. It's warm the moment it comes out of the faucet, and the water pressure is amazing. Ah! Uh, drunk Axel is built different. Axel's just built different. Axel is baby and needs to be protected, but Logan is also baby and needs to be protected. Oh, and you can even watch TV or play music. It's got speakers built in and everything. That sounds amazing. I'd love to try it out. You're you're sure it's okay, right? Yep, it's as I said. Ty will be a lot happier if you do. Okay, yes, please. Great, follow me. I'll show you to the bathroom. Just toss your clothes outside the door when you're undressed, and I'll get them all washed and dried for you. How will I know when they're done? Don't worry. Just stay in the shower, and I'll knock on the door when your clothes are ready. I'll just leave them outside the door, okay? Okay. Having shown Logan the bathroom and subsequently receiving a damp pile of clothing that he tossed through a crack in the door, I took the pile into the laundry room where I tossed the clothes inside the machine, noticing a particular absence of undergarments in the pile during the process. I closed the door and grabbed the detergent and softener from the shelf, loading both to their respective receptacles. With everything prepared, I reached for the unit's control panel. There, a confusing mess of buttons and labels greeted me, almost as though they were my punishment for refusing Ty's assistant. I swallowed nervously before pressing the power button. The console quickly sprung to life, accompanied by a series of ascending beeps. This revealed a variety of blue flashing lights that scattered my focus as what appeared to be a pair of similarly blue zeros spun around and around in rapid succession. It became immediately clear to me that Ty's washing machine was on a completely different level from those I was familiar with, having at least twice as many buttons as it should have. It was all fancy and special after all. Boy, did I feel foolish for having joked about it. With all the obnoxious flashing lights, I simply could not make heads or tails of what I was supposed to do next. Lacking in better ideas, I reached for the quick button hoping I'd stumbled upon some kind of preset. Alas, the washer only returned a series of low-pitched, displeasing sound, displeased sounding tones. Yikes, I wasn't happy about that. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold up. Ty is, like, disappointed in us right now, but I don't have, like, a Ty preset thing set up, so I'm just going to, uh... I scratched my head as I surveyed the buttons on the control panel once again. Starting to try a different approach, I pressed the button which read wash and the button which read dry. Yeah, that's a better sound. Part of me now wished that I had listened to Ty's instructions, but the satisfaction I knew I would 
feel once I finally conquered the convoluted contraption all on my own would be well worth the trouble it had given me. Feeling confident that the next button I pressed would at long last come in against the wash, I couldn't help but grin smugly to myself as I pressed the button on the washer that read start. <laughs> what the? It seemed as though I had been mistaken. I sighed with disappointment before inspecting the control panel once again, hoping to find my bearings and perhaps even uncom uncover some sort of clue as to what I needed to do to begin the wash cycle. The blue numbers on the display seemed to spin with even greater intensity than before, the machine growing impatient as it demanded satisfaction. Maybe I was just imagining it? The flashing lights definitely seemed faster, or did they? Finally, it seemed as though my survey, survey had borne fruit. Off to one side of the control panel was a button that read program. Surely this would be the answer to all my woes, right? I reached out my hand for what I hoped would be the last time resting, resting my finger gently atop the program key and taking a deep breath before at long last I pressed it. But what? In response to my input, the previous blue light on the display shifted to a threatening shade of blood red as the washer bleated its furious sounds over and over, and showing no signs of stopping anytime soon. The washer's volatile response conjured something of a primal fear from deep within. It felt like a caveman who was interacting with wildly advanced alien technology capable of vaporizing me at a moment's notice. For the love of God, I majored in computer science. How the hell had a washing machine of all things bested me? It made no sense. Why won't you stop? Intimidated by the aggressive washing machine and perhaps even a little frightened, I fled the machine's relentless droning, ducking into Ty's bedroom while I was practically prepared to beg for him to tame this ferocious beast on my behalf. <laughs> oh my god, Ty, please help! Your washing machine has gone apeshit and I don't know how to stop it. Yeah, glad I brought up the sensor bar because, uh... Please, for the love of God, put your penis away. Goodness, I can hear it from here. Why, hello there. It was not the first time that day I had seen Ty without his clothes, but it was a view I would never grow tired of. No less striking or worthy of my undivided attention than ever before. I sure hope you've got a permit for being so damn sexy. I do not, though if you intend to arrest me, perhaps it would be best... It would be best to wait until I have tended to our, load, to our rogue laundry appliance. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, and Ty? Yes, my dear? I was conditioned to feel shame in these circumstances, so I defiantly refused Ty's aid, only to find myself begging for his assistance mere minutes later. If you're Diego, I would have seen no one to grief, as he strutted about with a smug sense of superiority. I was wrong. I don't know how to operate your washing machine after all. I'm sorry. My love, there is no need for apologies, and believe me, I still very much appreciate you shouldering some burden on my behalf. That was very kind of you, my dear. I feel like such an idiot. I can't even operate a washing machine. My dear, believe me, I struggled with this unit in the beginning as well. Even now, I must I still I must still consult the manual for anything beyond the most basic washes. There is no shame in being stumped, my love, nor is there shame in asking for my help, previously declined or otherwise. Ty was not like Diego. There is no sense of superiority, no rubbing salt in my wounds, not even the slightest not even a slightly smug grin. Only encouragement and, hun and honeyed words to help soothe my bruised ego as he prepared to render his aid without hesitation. Ty was anything but ordinary. In fact, he was extraordinary. And that was just one of the many good reasons I loved him with all of my heart. Just one more while just one moment while I dress myself, my dear. Then I will accompany you to the laundry room and show you the basics. I suspect they will come in handy for the future. After all, this will likely be the first of many times you use my washing machine. Thanks, Ty. You are most welcome, my dear. Now, where did I leave my... Uh, oh. <laughs> um. Much to our shock, the bedroom door creaked ajar. The sounds of the washer accompanied by... Accompanied a completely naked Logan who had wandered right into Ty's bedroom with a look of concern and shame upon his face. To one side stood my magnificent boyfriend, his perfectly toned body accentuated by his intricate swirling stripes. <sighs> Near the other side was a cuddly bear of Snow White, his soft fur like a blanket, and his belly the ultimate pillow. The 
fact I had slept with both of these irresistible men and the thought that I might someday sleep with them both at the same time, had I died and gone to heaven, or can dreams really come true after all? Wait, what is that noise? Uh, I made the washing machine angry. What? Yeah, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that as well. There's no need for concern, my dear. You may relax and enjoy your hot shower. Oh, um, I, I can't get the shower to t turn on. I see. Well, if you allow me just a moment to dress myself and silence that horrible racket, I'll give you a demonstration of how the shower works. Thank you. Uh, hey, Logan, forgive me for asking, but why didn't you grab a towel before you came out to find us? I, I haven't sh showered yet. I didn't want to dirty another towel. Well, that is very considerate of you, Logan. Thank you. Um, no problem. Ty would give us both the demonstrations as he had promised. First prioritizing silencing the irate washer. Once the beast has finally tamed, he followed with the crash course in how the affluent prefer to wash themselves. With Logan's shower finally underway, the two of us reconvened by the washer as Ty dished out characteristic apologies in spades for what was, a, for what was realistically a completely unsubstantial delay to begin with. Apparently, I needed to press the wash key and then use the plus key to dial in a time for that part of the process before doing the same thing with the dry key. And the blue display turning bright red, I'd inadvertently switched the wash cycle from warm water to hot. That was all it had been. And thank goodness for that, for a moment there, I feared the malevolent spirit that once inhabited the Black Claw's tour bus had caught up with Ty once more. Hell bent on causing havoc among, among his finest linens. Oh, the horror! The following half hour was spent comfortably sipping pina coladas as I lounged on Ty's sofa, basking in the glorious warmth of the fireplace. Ty, on the other hand, seized the opportunity to pre prepare dinner for the three of us. With the ingredients he had available culminating in a meat pie that mercilessly teased my nostrils with its delicious savory fragrance. It was true that neither of us had eaten dinner yet, but it seemed that Ty's main culinary motivation was to win Logan's favor. I suppose it is true what they say, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Despite offering my assistance, Ty stood fast, insisting on preparing the dish all on his lonesome. With what had transpired only briefly before, I was not so keen to force the matter this time around. I relented, resulting instead to pass the time chatting with Ty from across the room. At long last, the cheerful electronic whistle from the opposite end of the house indicated that Logan's clothes were washed, dried, and ready to be worn once again. Either that, or I was about to walk into a trap. It was only a matter of time before the machines turned on us, after all, and if Ty's dastardly washer was the first to draw blood, I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest. I fearfully climbed to my feet and began nervously ambling down the hallway, reluctant to come face to face with the dreaded contraption once again, but knowing I had little choice, Ty was make busy making dinner and... Well, I suppose Logan had wandered out of the bathroom naked once already, while stopping him from fetching his clothes himself. Then he would have to fuss with the dreadful contraption instead. Ah, I couldn't do that to him. Not now that I knew th what the machine was like. Logan was much too sweet. I could never do that to him. But if Diego was here, you'd better believe I'd be sending him straight into the hornet's nest, totally blind and without so much as a word of warning. Man, that'd be hilarious. He'd be furious. As I arrived in the laundry, I took solace in the fact that no buttons needed to be pressed. I simply had to retrieve the clothes from within. Easy, right? What could possibly go wrong? And nothing can go wrong. Oh no, it all went wrong. Actually, let, let me like find that. Let me find that. Ty, the washing machine door won't open. <laughs> oh, come now, my dear. You're merely overreacting. No way, man. I'm telling you. The washer has some seriously bad juju. Juju, you say? Well, then, I never knew you were, this, I never knew you were the superstitious type, Aiden. Just watch you and say, I'm not, but that washing machine is awful. That's just it. I'm not, but I know evil when I see it. I'm... Evil, you say? My goodness. Hello. Aw. This boy is scared. Get him a fucking happy meal. 
Well, hello, my dear. Please take a seat here with us on the sofa. And I must say, you were looking delightfully fresh. I trust you enjoyed the shower? Uh, um, y yes, thanks. Considering how horribly damp you were before, I can only imagine it hit the spot. Uh, um, what's, what's that smell? Uh, I hope you are hungry. I prepared a delicious homemade meat pie for dinner, and I'd be most honored if you would join us. Uh, oh, um, uh, are you sure? Will there be enough? Of course, there will even be seconds if you are still hungry after your first slice. Hopefully this makes the long wait on that dreadful weather somewhat worthwhile. You will be joining us, right? Uh, um, yes, please. Hey, yo? Yo. My dog literally just, like, walked over, turned off power to the thing that, like, powers this whole thing, and then turned it back on and walked off. Just as a giant, just as a giant... Fuck you, I guess. Hold on, let me check it. Here we go. No, seriously, I swear to God, my dog's an asshole sometimes. He's cute, but he's an asshole. Fantastic. It has been cooling on the countertop for a few minutes now, and I believe it should be ready. Should be about ready to serve. Now then, Logan, do you drink? Aiden and I are indeed in need of. Aiden and I are in need of fresh pina coladas, and it would be no trouble at all simply to prepare one extra glass. Uh, ooh, please. Marvelous. Give me a moment, and I'll return with heaped plates and freshly mixed drinks. Meanwhile, please make yourselves comfortable. Don't I always? You do, which makes you a fantastic example for Logan here. I will return shortly. so excited. Kai returned to the kitchen once more, leaving Logan awkwardly perched on the end of a so on the end of the sofa, a short distance from my own pew. It was obvious that he was still incredibly nervous in Ty's presence, but I was nonetheless proud of Logan for just how responsive he was being. Hey Logan, you're doing great, buddy. I can see the effort you're putting in, and I appreciate it. Uh, oh. Thanks. Um, I know he's important to you, so I I'm doing my best that, that he'll he'll like me too. Don't worry, he already does. You have nothing to be scared of, so just relax, okay? Okay, hey, um, what's a pina colada? Thank goodness you're saying the name correctly. What? Oh, just a friend of mine, he- uh, don't worry about it. A pina colada is a cocktail made with white rum, coconut cream, and pineapple juice. It's delicious. Not super strong, but you definitely can get a nice buzz if you have a few. Or wasted if you're a non-drinker. I don't usually drink. Does that mean I'm gonna get wasted? Oh, I doubt it. The one time I saw that happen was- well, kind of a special case, I guess. It'll be fine. No, no, we're, we're you're saying it wrong. No, Aiden, you're you're saying it wrong. It, it, it Axel has declared it is no longer pronounced Pina Colada. It is pronounced Penis Colander. Oh, okay. Hey, so what do you think of Ty so far? Isn't he great? Yo! You're like activated Siri for some reason. Oh, um... He's, um, really nice and, um... He's so buff. He sure is. Ty participated in this year's tournament, the two of you might have fought. It would have been an impressive fight, that's for sure. Next to you, though, next to you two, though, I feel like such a slacker. I'm looking to Ty some find someone like me attractive. He seems to like that I'm smaller. He's got good taste. Thanks, Logan. That's nice of you to say. Here you go, Logan, my dear. A slice of homemade meat pie and a freshly mixed pina colada. Consider it an apology for having left you outside in the rain for so long. Please, enjoy. It's okay, but thank you. You're most welcome, my dear. And here's yours, Aiden, my love. Consider it an apology for the ice cream situation earlier today. You definitely don't need to apologize for that, but thank you anyway, Ty. It looks delicious. I can't wait to dig in. 
ice cream situation. Oh, we ate some ice cream earlier that gave us... The, gave us... Aiden! Not during dinner, my love. Logan, let us simply suggest that you never buy ice cream from a stall on pier. Oh, okay. With the topic successfully put to rest, Logan instead, re ins Logan instead retrieved his fork, the sound of which attracted Ty's attention. Watch closely as Logan scooped up a piece of his meal. Upon delivering it to his hungry mouth, a tense few moments passed while he chewed. Oh, wow. Is this r really homemade? Indeed, it is, my dear. Well, I wish you could cook dinner for me every night. <laughs> well, as it would happen, my recipes are always on offer down at the bar, and I work at the kitchen most nights that I work. You can even have a discount as a friend of ours if you would like. Um, do you do delivery? Not currently, no, but rest assured it is something I will look into. And if it is any consolation, I'll be more than happy to deliver seconds this evening, that is. If you are still hungry, I want you to finish your first helping. Y yes, please. Ty and I consumed our meals at a reasonable pace. The pie every bit as delicious as Logan had implied. It was a notion he reinforced by greedily tossing large mouthfuls down his gullet at an alarming frequency. So alarming, in fact, that he requested a second helping before either Ty and I had reached halfway on our first. Luckily for Ty, Logan was happy to serve himself so that he wouldn't interrupt Ty's meal. And so he did, his stubby tail beating from side to side with excitement all the while. I'd only just finished my first plate, and Ty still had a few bites of his left when Logan's plate once again lay bare. Thankfully, Ty was more than prepared, having made enough that there was another slice for Logan to dig into. That he did, and with the most ad admirable gusto. Following Logan's third serving, and a second for the rest of us, Ty fetched us all another round of cocktails. With our drinks in hand, and comfortable in the warmth of the fire, the three of us struck up conversation as Ty worked his magic, encouraging Logan to share more and more about himself. And it seems that Ty's delicious home-cooked meal worked as he had hoped, with Logan seemingly more comfortable in his presence than ever before, and more than happy to answer all of Ty's questions. Lewis Townsend? Truly? Aiden mentioned you were an author, but I cannot say I expected to recognize your pseudonym. You're just full of surprises and hidden talents, my dear. It now makes so much more sense that you own your home freehold at such a young age. Congratulations, Logan. That is quite an impressive feat. Thank you. Do you enjoy living alone? Personally, I find that find that as much as I enjoy my independence, I still miss the company. I spend an awful lot of time with friends and such, especially when friends and such, especially when there's no other man around the house. I really like living by myself. I, I don't feel comfortable around many people, so it's easier that way. I don't really get lonely, so it's okay. Oh dear, I know you were quite shy, that much has been apparent, but I suppose I cannot help but wonder, something happened to make you feel that way? Um, lots of things. I, um, I, I published my first book when I was still in school. I thought finishing the book would be the hard part, but the publisher tricked me into signing a really bad contract. I couldn't afford a lawyer, so they took advantage of my youth and naivete. The book did really well, and it kind of launched my career, but I barely saw any money from it, and I don't own the rights. That's why I wrote the Earth Below series, so I could start fresh with a brand new property. That didn't help, but there were that didn't help. But there were other things too. So many people who wanted to be my friend just because they wanted something from me. I just I don't trust many people anymore, and I don't feel comfortable around people I don't trust. Oh dear, believe me, I know exactly how you feel. My band, the Black Claws, we made the same mistake with our first record. We were young and we were just so happy to get a foot in the door that we signed on the dotted line without another thought. It was only once we saw the first of our royalties that we realized just how bad the deal we had signed was. Several thousand copies sold, and each of us received an embarrassing pittance. Worse yet, that was the largest check we received, with each subsequent payday being smaller than the last. Black Claws? I've heard of you guys, but I thought you broke up. We had, but recently we reformed. Minus one problematic form, remember that is. Not to worry, he has been replaced, and we are well prepared to play our first show this coming Tuesday. If that interests you, I'd be more than happy to fetch you a ticket free of charge. Uh, oh, um, rock concerts are kinda loud. That they are. I can understand if live music is not your forte. What if I set you up with a copy of our dis or discography instead? That way, if we are too loud, you can simply turn us down. Oh, um, yes, please. I will do just that. Please, if I've not done so by the time you leave, be sure to remind me. Yo! Yo, Streamlabs just like shit itself for a second. Thank you. 
Uh, it is my pleasure, my dear. Returning to the topic at hand, I understand why you distrust people. Time and time again, I've had my trust broken. Perhaps I am a fool for still being so trusting. Goodness knows my trust has been abused time and time again since... But this way, I am easily able to forge friendships with others. Having friends that you can trust is such an important thing for your mental well-being. And personally, I would consider the occasional betrayal well worth all the time that has come from such an open stance. You are a good person, Logan. If you were more approachable, I am certain you would have been more you would have more friends than you would know what to do with. But even then, you have Aiden as a friend now. I trust him, and I know that you can too. And I'll be happy to be your friend as well, if if you would have me. Uh, um. Logan paused for a moment, scratching his chin as he peered back at Ty with a suspicious gaze. But after several tense moments, his expression relaxed. You don't seem like a bad guy, and Aiden trusts you too, and I, I do trust him, so yeah, we can be friends too. I'm thrilled to hear that, my dear. I only hope I can be as positive a factor in your life as my beloved partner has been thus far. He was there to cheer you on at the tournament this morning, was he not? I understand you were victorious and that your opponent was a bandmate of mine. Huh? His name is Jay. He is an Ortegan, a blue-colored dragon. And from what I hear, you gave him quite the thrashing. Sorry. There is no need for apologies, my dear. He can still play his bass guitar. That is what matters most. And from what I hear, it was quite the impressive bout. To say the least, I don't think Jay even managed a single strike. Bravo, my dear. Bravo. Thanks. And from what I hear, your opponent in the, fin in the finales will be a raptor named Kyrix. A word of warning, he is known to push the rules to their limits. He fights as dirty as he can get away with, and that, combined with his considerable strength, makes him a fearsome foe. He was last year's champion, and I have little doubt, doubt that he will do whatever it takes to retain, to retain his title. Though, if what I hear about your fighting abilities is true, he might just have his work cut out for him. Hey Logan, Kyrx is my best friend Diego's ex. They're not on good terms, let's say. So be sure to give him a good clobbering for Diego, okay? I'll try. Um, so... Aiden said you guys had, a, had to deal with an emergency earlier? Indeed, it is a rather long story, I'm afraid, and one with many fussy details in less. simple version is that a dear friend of mine, and an acquaintance of Aiden here, has suddenly needed to leave town. Oh, um, when will they be back? He won't be. Unfortunately, he's needed to leave for good. And sadly, we'll probably never see him again. We don't know where he has gone. But it's probably a long way away. And we won't be able to contact him either. I'm sorry. Please, there is no need to be sorry. I will miss him, certainly. But I suppose in a strange way, I was well prepared for this scenario. All in all, I'm mostly just happy that he is safe and well. And for that reason, I'm doing okay. Aiden, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. He was definitely an amazing guy. I wish I could have gotten to know him better. But like Ty, I'm also just glad that he's safe. I, I had a friend who moved over like that. I, I couldn't contact him either. He changed all of his accounts, his phone number, everything. Oh. Aiden mentioned something like this. I am sorry, Logan. Would you like to tell us about it? Only if you're comfortable, my dear. There's no pressure. Um, well, his name was Toby. And we were friends since we were little. In high school, we ended up fighting over something really stupid, and it kind of spiraled. I held a grudge for a long time after. He contacted me after we graduated. He wanted to put all that aside and be friends again, but but I still had that grudge, so I ignored him. And then he moved away for university, changed all his accounts, his number, everything. What was the fight about? Um, we, we, um, I had feelings for him. I had a feeling it was something like that. What happened exactly? Um, I was too scared to say anything for a long time that he got in a relationship with someone else. That hurt, and um, I started avoiding him. I was kind of mad at him, even though I knew he'd done nothing wrong. When they broke up, I I finally found the courage to say something after so long, but he was hurting, and was still hurting from the breakup, and he, he was mad at me for how I'd been treating him. He yelled at me, and I yelled back. Yelled? I could hardly imagine you yelling at someone. You're so quiet and mild-mannered. I usually don't, but it was all I could do, and things just got worse and worse from there. I didn't take the rejection well. We kind of became enemies. We kind of hated each other for a while. Things just got worse and worse. I am sorry, Logan. What an awful end to a long friendship. It's my fault. I should have had the courage to say something before we got in a relationship. I should have been more mature about my feelings. I shouldn't have treated him like I did. I shouldn't have asked him out when I did when I did and expected he'd just forgive me for how I'd been up until that point. I shouldn't have held a grudge, and I should have replied when he contacted me and asked if we could put it all behind us. 
It's what I wanted, but, but I was too caught up in our feud. I was stupid, and I didn't even realize how stupid it was until it was too late. Until he was gone. It's my fault. I sh should have said something earlier. Should have understood my timing was off. I shouldn't have held a grudge. I should have replied to his messages. Give this man a hug. Give him a hug. Mm. I, I want. I want to hug him. How do you feel about him after all this time? I don't know. All I know is that I miss him. I miss my friend, and I'll probably never see him again. Toby is it short for something? Um. Yeah. His name is Tobias. Tobias Omphist. Tobias Omphist. The very same person Diego and I had befriended in university. And judging by the look of revelation upon Ty's face, it was the very same person associated with Lucas. This meant that Tobias, Toby, was now back in Woodcrest. It was almost a delicate it was a delicate situation, and thus I deferred to Ty's judgment, allowing him to determine the next move. Thank you for sharing with us, Logan. I hope the two of you are able to reconnect someday and rekindle your friendship, however unlikely that may seem in the present. Thank you. For the time being, Ty believed it best not to reveal what we knew to Logan. A decision that I by all means agreed with. It made sense that speaking to Tobias ourselves would be the wisest thing to do. There was nothing to suggest that after all this time, Tobias would even want a reunion. It was better to keep Logan in the dark at least for now to avoid getting his hopes up unnecessarily. Despite the less upbeat mood of recent topics, our night continued unabated with happier conversation filling the remaining hours. Our fire was gradually reduced to cinders as its radiating warmth receded in kind. It was a clear sign of how much time had elapsed. It was now time to wrap things up. The final hour was full of smiles and laughter, not just from Ty and me, but from Logan as well. More and more he opened up, his trust for Ty growing with every passing moment. He and I managed to reinforce our bond as well, making for a very successful night indeed. He paid for my meal. It was the most expensive thing on the menu. <laughs> oh goodness, how much was it? Forty-nine dollars. Oh my, and the day after you were out of a job, no less. You really were dead set on misbehaving, Aiden. Stop ganging up on me. No fair. He kept trying on the walk home. I th thought the price of my food would put him off, but no. So I called him out, and he surprised me. Oh? How so? When he realized how we'd been acting, he seemed really guilty, and he was willing to give up what he was after just to put things right. He said he'd be happy just being my friend. Oh, Aiden, you are unbelievable sometimes. I admit, at the time, I didn't know if we were even compatible as friends, but it was clear to me that there was more to Logan than meet the eye. I was curious and I wanted to know more, and yeah, I felt like a total fool. I wanted a redemption even if I didn't get what I wanted. That is very noble of you, my dear. Now, if I recall correctly, Logan here almost did not go through with it when you arrived, yes? Yup, it was my first time. I was sick of being a virgin, but I'm- because I'm usually by myself. I don't really have many opportunities. I was just- I was thinking of just hooking up with some random, or even paying for it, but I could never find the nerve. So after all that, I thought about it all night. I was nervous, almost didn't go through with it, but I worked myself up because I didn't want to let another opportunity go to waste, and, um, Aiden is really cute. That he is, my dear. I remained silent as Logan told the rest of his tale, but I couldn't help but blush in a little in response to the compliment. So I sent the message, and spent the next 15 minutes freaking out about it. Then, when he arrived, I couldn't do it. I was too scared. And Aiden watched the movie with me. He didn't do anything except be a friend like he said he would. And he would have left without having done anything if I ha hadn't stopped him. That's what changed my mind, I think. I knew he was genuine. I felt that I could trust him. You did very well, Aiden. And it seems as though everything worked out in the end. A victory is a victory, no? You ended up with even more than you bargained for. Sure did. I'm glad Logan and I could be friends in the end. He's a lot cooler than I'd expected. And the sex was fun, not gonna lie. Yup, I mean... It was lots of fun. As was tonight, my dears. Thank you for visiting us, Logan. It has been lovely getting to know you, and we have most enjoyed your company. And I apologize once again for leaving you out in the rain so long. Yeah, sorry about that, Logan. But now that you're more comfortable with us, you can call us, you can call us for a ride next time, right? Next time? Oh, are we... Is this... Enjoying yourself so much that you wish you could never end, my dear? I'll take that as a compliment to my hospitality. It is getting rather late, however, and I have a busy few days ahead. I cannot be staying up until all hours of the night like I used to. It's okay, Logan. We can hang out like this again soon. And don't worry. We'll give you a ride home, seeing as the rain still hasn't let up. Don't want you getting wet again. Indeed. Uh oh, um, okay. Logan, my dear, you seem so reluctant. Is there something wrong? 
Oh, um, no, it's, it's just, um, never mind. There's obvious Logan had something on his mind, but he wasn't comfortable telling us what. I decided to cry. After all, he could trust us, couldn't he? Logan, hey, what's on your mind? You can tell us. Indeed, if something is wrong, tell us so that we can help. Um, there is nothing you cannot tell us, my dear. I promise we will not judge you. Right, Aiden? Exactly. Um, well, I kind of thought that, um, that you guys, you, um, I thought you guys, um, invited me here because we, um, we were gonna do it? Oh! Forget what I said. It was stupid. I, I, I got the wrong idea. I'm so stupid. Logan, wait, hold on. I'm such an idiot. I'm s sorry. Logan, please, just a moment. Allow us to speak. I, I mentioned something like that to Aiden, and I just kind of assumed that, th that this was it. That. I'm sorry. Logan! Logan. I apologize for our deception. It seems as though our intentions were somewhat more obvious than we had realized. We had hoped you would join us tonight so that you could grow more comfortable with us, with me especially. And that was the hope that if everything went well, a sexual encounter between the three of us could be proposed on a subsequent night. We had not anticipated that anything would happen tonight. Admittedly, things progressed quicker than either of us had been expecting. Um, is it too late? Is tonight not good? Well, I, I suppose it's such an exciting prospect as we're postponing my bedtime for. How do you feel, Aiden? Any objections? No way. This couldn't be happening so suddenly. What if Logan said yes? I've never done anything like this before. How will we decide who does what? Will this be weird? Oh god, this is also happening so fast. I'm going to hide the screen. Uh, I, I, I feel the same way you do, Ty. If you're both happy, so am I. God damn it, did I really just agree to it? What is wrong with me? Oh god, what am I getting myself into? Oh god, oh god, oh god. Well then, Logan, it would seem that the choice is in your hands. If you are uncertain or do not feel ready for it just yet, we can revisit the idea another night, or even not at all. And fear not, we will remain friends no matter what you choose. If, however, you are feeling up to it, I believe the next step for us to, would be to take us to the bedroom, and we will see then what happens from here. Um... I admit, I was freaking out a little. It wasn't that I didn't want this, but it was more that I, than I, that I hadn't expected it to happen so soon and I hadn't prepared myself mentally for what seemed like a pipe dream only moments ago. I had no doubt it would be a lot of fun. There was so much about it that I simply couldn't predict. I'd never done anything like this before, and as appealing as it sounded, it, it was almost something so incredibly foreign. Something previously confined to the realms of fantasy was about to become real. Part of me hoped that Logan would defer Ty's offer for another time so that I could take the opportunity to get my nerves back under control and grapple with the reality of a threesome. I'm ready. Let's take this to the bedroom. Wait, seriously? Yep, I'm ready for this. Oh shit, it's happening, isn't it? It's actually happening. Okay, breathe, Aiden. Just breathe. You can do this. I can do this. Well then, this certainly is an exciting development. Good news, Aiden. It looks as though you got to keep your commitment after all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, who's, who's gonna do what? Hmm, I'm certain we can figure that out in a moment, no? Though, if you have another idea, I would be quite happy to hear it. I've only done it just once the other day with Aiden. That was good because it was good because he took the lead. And I was wondering, maybe you can take the lead this time, Ty? Oh, well, if that was what would make you most comfortable, I'll be more than happy to take that to take point. How do you feel about that, Aiden? We can lead together if that's what you would prefer. Uh, um, I knew there was no point in hiding how nervous I was. I'd also prefer if Ty took charge, at least the first time around. This is all new to me, too. I'd feel most comfortable if you took the reins, Ty. Well then, that is what they call democracy. As for your votes, I'll take the lead. Now then, would you prefer we, that we take things slowly, Logan, or would you prefer we go things a little wild? Wild, please. Any objections, Aiden? I couldn't believe what was about to happen. As long as Ty was in charge, I at least felt as though I could happily go along with the flow. And if Logan wanted wild, hell, in for a penny, in for a penny, in for a pound, right? Wild sounds great. And both of you are certain you wish to do this. This is your final opportunity to back out. If either of you, if either of you has, has any doubts, now's the time to make them known. I'm nervous, but I'm down. Let's let's do this. Very good, my dear. And Logan, any doubts? But nope. Um, it's kind of scary, but I'm also really excited. Tremendous. Come along, then. Let us get this party started. I couldn't believe what was actually happening. I was terrified, but also so excited. 
It felt so weird having an extra person there, but it also felt strangely liberating. I trusted Ty. I trusted that doing this wouldn't cause a rift between us. It was a strange moment as Logan and I followed behind Ty as he led us to his bedroom. He was in charge and would dictate what would happen next, and he had been given a pass to get a little wild with the two. I had no idea what wild would compromise, but I was weirdly eager to find out. Just... The three of us walked single file with Ty Lee heading up the pack as he led us down the hallway and up to the first door on our right, Ty's bedroom. Ty threw the door ajar before turning in place to face Logan. Logan, my dear, would you mind giving the two of us a brief moment to speak in private? It will not take long, I promise. Oh? N no problem. I'll- I'll wait out here, then. Thank you ever so kindly. Aiden, come. I had no idea what this was all about just yet, so I followed obediently as- obediently as Ty pushed the bedroom door closed behind us. I then watched as he waltzed across the room to his bedside table where he received- where he retrieved a small box. Here you go, Melov. The pheromone blockers I mentioned earlier on, just in case. Shit, my nice save. I've forgotten all about these. Definitely well worth taking, though. I wouldn't want to risk making Logan sick, as unlikely as that possibility is. Indeed, like I said, it is just in case. They're not naked yet. Thank God. Gotta admit, I'm glad this is why you wanted a moment in private. Part of me was worried I'd done nothing wrong. Of course not, my love. And, apologize if, and I apologize if my invitation gave you something of a scare. Now then, down the hatch. He might be warm and dry this time around, but that is still no excuse to keep the poor bear waiting. Agreed. In near perfect sync, we both uncorked our vials and took a swig in the interest of Logan's well-being. Oh boy, this test, this tastes, this stuff tastes even worse than the usual blend. The best medicines are often foul, my dear. Some would consider that a hallmark of quality. Still a tastier beverage than that god awful whiskey. Though that says nothing at all. Even raw sewage would be preferable to that. I would scold you for saying such things if I did not know you were dead serious. You'd better believe it. <laughs> uh, we seem to have gotten sidetracked, my love. I will fetch Logan from down the hall. One moment, please. I approached Ty's discretion when it came to pheromone blockers. After what had happened earlier in the evening, there was no longer any point in keeping those things a secret. But in this specific scenario, explaining to Logan what the medicine was for would no doubt send us down a time-consuming rabbit hole of prerequisite background information that neither Ty nor I had the energy or the, had the time or energy for. The sound of the door being clo closing, the sound of the door closing once more, announcing Logan's arrival as he slowly ambled into the room, admiring Ty's refined taste and decor as he went. Eventually, all three of us gathered once more, prompting Ty to speak up, exercising his responsibility as our de facto leader in this bizarre and unprecedented situation we were in. I could tell that Logan was as happy as I was that Ty would be taking charge and showing us the ropes. First and foremost, welcome to my two-hour bedroom, Logan. Although this is not the first time you've been here this evening, please, welcome back would be more... Perhaps welcome back would be more appropriate? <laughs> um, thanks. Before we begin our festivities, I'd like to confirm with you both one last time. You are certain this is what you want to do, and you are both comfortable with me calling the shots? Y yes please, Ty. Such enthusiasm, it is as though you are a different person from the waterlogged polar bear we invited earlier this- we invited inside earlier this evening. This sort of thing has been a fantasy of mine for a long, long time. I don't even know why, but the thought of it, it's really exciting. Well, I am positively delighted to hear you, hear you say so, my dear. I do hope that Aiden and I can help make those fantasies a reality this evening. And how about you, Aiden? Have you any concerns, any fears? Nothing specific. I'm just a little nervous is all, and I can't shake the feeling that this is somehow wrong, you know? Ah, uh, yes, that's quite normal for your first time, I love. Society promotes exclusivity and discourages having more than one sexual or romantic partner. The question you must ask yourself is, who exactly decided that was right? Is that truly our nature? Is that truly your nature? And do we not possess the autonomy and free will required to decide exactly what is right and wrong for ourselves, regardless of what anybody else thinks? If the idea raises an eyebrow or strikes a chord with you, then you ought to at least dip your toes. The first time I did something like this, I had doubts as well, but I enjoyed myself so much that it, became, that it began a long history of such exciting encounters, and while it has been some time since I participated in such a thing, I would never pass up an opportunity to play with my lover and his good friend. Especially considering how ludicrously attractive you both are. It is as though the universe has given me a day-late birthday miracle. You're really hot too, Ty. And Aiden too. Um, uh... Heck, go easy on the flirting, Ty, or else you might overwhelm poor Logan here. I suppose I've gotten a little carried away yet again. That was quite alright. Actions speak louder than words, you know? Perhaps now would be a good time to make our start. Whew, 
I suppose that is why we're here. Nervous as I am, I guess I'm ready when you are. Tremendous. And how about you, Logan? Any objections, or shall we get the show on the road? Um, y yep. I'm ready, I think. Seems like it's unanimous. Well, the Mr. Leader, what's first on the agenda? Well, Logan, dear, come sit on the end of the bed beside me. Uh, oh, okay. Logan scuttled across the room, making no attempt to conceal his obvious excitement as he took his seat as Ty had instructed. This left only me standing in the center of the room, and from their position, they both had their eyes trained on me as a subtle smirk began to unwind across Ty's lips. Uh, uh, what's the big idea, exactly? Well, my dear, a few hours ago, you wandered into this very room and witnessed me in a state of complete undress. Much to the surprise of us both, Logan soon arrived in a similar state of undress. You got to enjoy the view of our candid bodies. But so far, that favor has yet to have been returned. Thus, as my capacity as leader of this encounter, I would like for you to undress for us, my love. I couldn't deny that tie at a point. It was a little unfair that I'd already gotten to bask in their glorious nudity once this evening while my clothes remain on my body. Freezing them both, even the slightest glimpse. Oh, God. I'm certain uh... It's awful. Like, okay. Okay, I'm just gonna, like, read this real quick. A view every bit as magnificent as always, my love. Your body is a joy to behold, and the show was made that much better for the absence of any underwear. It's so nice. Um, you've got such a nice butt. He most certainly does. I would say it is one of my favorite features. There is not a single inch of his glorious body that is not a favorite of mine. Aw, oh, shucks. Referring like that, I can only imagine there's something you're waiting for running from me, am I right? And what if you are right, hmm? Ha. I chuckled, finding Ty's corny attempts at being coy downright adorable. Ty may have been calling the shots, but I didn't see any good reason why I couldn't take this opportunity to make a request of my own. Well, I'm sure I'd feel at least a little more obedient if I weren't the only one in the nude. Ah, uh, well, I suppose we can manage that, can we not? Oh, God. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh,
god. Awful. Finally over. You're finally over. <laughs> I can finally play the sound again, I think. <laughs> it's okay what I'm looking at right now is adorable but it's awful and I cannot show a single part of it We both wrapped an arm around our life-size teddy bear, unashamed to take full advantage of the wonderful situation with which we'd been presented. I couldn't care- uh. <laughs> Like I said, it's adorable, but awful, all at the same time. Eighteen. We're going to leave off here tonight. We're just going to check ahead real quick. <laughs> oh my god. adorable 
It was adorable. It was so awful. It was awful. seen shit that nobody should ever see. I, I need some eye bleach. It was weird as heck. It was weird as fuck. But I need some eye bleach. Where's the eye bleach? I need eye bleach right now. I'm going to pull it up. <laughs> okay, I got the eye bleach up. Trying to like get it up. Uh, okay, you know what? We're just gonna do this the yeah, lazy way. This makes me feel better. Okay, I'm gonna hop off and make a TikTok. Hopefully that'll like distract me from whatever the fuck I just saw. So uh stay safe, have a good night, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.